right, well, I am here with Lewis Gray, and Lewis, thanks for talking with us today about uh, all things web, video, and all that great stuff. And Appreciate it. Thanks, Morgan. Can you tell the folks a little bit about uh, who you are and what you do? Sure. I'm the author and publisher at lewisgray.com, which is an early adopter blog focused on technology here in Silicon Valley. Uh, you're kind of in the day job, I work at uh, Paladin Advisor Group, which is a brand new consultancy focused on helping people get everything from soup to nuts in terms of starting a business, raising venture capital, getting connections through business development, partnerships, marketing, and all the way down to social media, where we spent a lot of time in the last couple of years. Okay, very cool. And you're obviously on your blog, like you said, early adopter. You focus a lot on the latest innovations that are out there, and obviously a lot has to do with social media and that type of thing. One of the big things that um, folks are talking about right now is this idea of the real-time web and kind of, you know, whether it's Web 3.0 or Web 2.10, whoever, mm -hmm. you know, whatever camp you want to take. But can you talk a little bit maybe about that as a trend and what are some of the other big trends you see coming out? Real-time web is a very interesting adaptation of kind of the networks that we're already taking a lot of data and putting content into. Mm -hmm. So you've seen kind of this rise of social networks in every regard, everything from Friendster a few years ago to the MySpace, Facebook, and now you have Twitter and FriendFeed kind of leading the innovation curve. And so what's happened is you're finding a lot of content just streaming in. And so people were tired of hitting the refresh button. And now the real-time web is taking over and making things like Google seem slow. So not too long ago, we would search Google for a news item as it was happening. And now I don't think people are doing that. They're going to Twitter search because Twitter has an immediate reaction of the way that people are thinking and uh, being engaged with actual activity. So sometimes it's kind of silly. You know, you'll go on there and you'll find out what people are thinking about the Oscars or the BET Awards or any type of uh, movie that's on at the time. Mm -hmm. And other times it's a real world event. So the Iran elections or when uh, popular people are dying, right? You'll see an immediate response. So the real time web is kind of adding another layer of immediacy. And that's happening in just about every social network. FriendFeed kind of pulled over and did real time a few months ago. Twitter search is still there. Facebook is doing that, so you get the updates coming in. So it's just a new way to always be on top of the data. What has been out there is that does the general public, does the mass of people using these, you know, using Facebook, using Twitter, is that important to them, or how how does that fit in in terms of maybe a user experience, but then also in terms of how it's important for businesses as well? Well, I think what you're saying is that the mainstream has adopted mm -hmm. Facebook and Twitter and some of these other tools. And yes, being an early adopter always means that I'm using things that nobody else is, which is both a flag and a problem, right? Uh, but what that means is we get to try things out first, find out what's working and what's not, report back to the companies, and try and get an idea of what needs to change before the mainstream and corporate businesses take charge. So a corporate business needs to know what people are saying about their company. I always talk about it being in three stages. And the first is being aware of the tools, mm -hmm. being aware of what Twitter is, what does it do, what does Facebook do, what does LinkedIn do, what does Google blog search do and friend feed and all these tools? Second is watching. And watching and listening are kind of a really important piece, whether, whether that be for public relations or customer service issues or marketing. You want to find out what are they saying about you? What are they saying about your competition? What is your competition doing? And that happens in real time now. And the third and important piece is engaging. You know, I think often when I talk to companies initially, I say, I'm going to put a blog post up. It's like, really? Well, what have you thought about? What is the downstream effect of the content that is there? What is your strategy about the content that you're pushing, and how does that fit in with everything else? We've talked a lot about the rise of people saying they're social media experts, right? Yeah. And so what happens, in my opinion, is social media is just getting integrated in everything else that we do as businesses, be they marketing, sales, uh, branding, positioning. And pretty soon people aren't going to talk about it anymore. You know, writing a blog post, writing a tweet is going to be as normal as sending an email or sending a press release over the wire. It's just going to be part of what you do in the background, and that will just be absorbed into every piece of the business. Okay, 